Hi, uh, good day everyone. Uh, we are Group 2 and uh, I am your first reporter, Mr. Bertrand Stamera. Uh, the last time that we have tackled uh, major approaches to the teaching of reading, uh, we, the Group 1 already tackled uh, the first uh, reading, uh, teaching, uh, teaching reading approach, which is a uh, uh, sequential reading approach. Uh, now, our group is assigned to another two different approaches, which is the uh, uh, spontaneous reading approach and the managed reading system. Now, uh, what are these uh, approaches? What are these um, um, major reading approaches to teaching reading? Uh, these are uh, methods, methods or approaches for us to be able to uh, teach children how to read because we all know that reading is a vital aspect of learning of a child. So, without further ado, let us discuss spontaneous reading approach. Uh, before we continue with our uh, main topic, uh, let's first define reading approach because uh, we all know that our topic is part of uh, major approaches or reading approaches. Now, what is reading approach? Um, reading approach is a way or a method that will help students to solve their problem on in reading. So, as the definition said, uh, these are uh, methods or ways used by the teachers to help the students to read or help them to be able to comprehend and um, decode symbols which we are called reading. Now, let's go to our uh, main topic which is the spontaneous reading approach. Spontaneous reading approach, like the sequential reading approach discussed by Group 1, is sequentially organized according to levels of cognitive development. However, the spontaneous reading approach is highly dependent on the premise that learning is closely relate, related to interest and cognitive needs. Now, uh, what are these cognitive needs? Uh, we have already uh, studied that uh, there are hierarchy of needs. This, there are hierarchy of human needs. These are uh, shown or showed by Maslow on his uh, model of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Now, this mas Maslow hierarchy of needs uh, is a motivational theory in psychology comprising model of human needs often depict as hier hier hierarchical levels within a pyramid. So, uh, one part of uh, hierarchy of needs of human is the cognitive needs. But the uh, Maslow hierarchy of needs have, already, have only five levels. So Maslow um, extended or expanded the hierarchy of needs, which have uh, expanded and given uh, place for the cognitive uh, needs. Now, these cognitive needs are needs based on knowledge and understanding, curiosity, exploration, uh, predictability, creativity, discovery, and meaning. So, as a child, we all know that uh, children are prone to exploration because their level of curiosity is high. They ask questions, they learn things from asking from their inquiry to their parents, to the community, to the people around them, to their friends. They learn from their uh, curiosity. So, on this level of age, on the primary level or the lower level age of a children, we can say that uh, cognitive needs of a child should be given vital importance. Now, after we have defined spontaneous reading approach, and by the way, uh, uh, as we go on with our uh, reports. My other members will discuss furthermore about spontaneous reading approach and those uh, strategies or methods 
used in language and spontaneous reading approach. So you can have more ideas regarding this spontaneous uh, reading approach. So I have here strengths and weaknesses of the spontaneous reading approach. First, we are going to discuss the strengths. The first strength of uh, spontaneous reading approach is, is it is personalized. Uh, there is no uh, prepared materials in spontaneous reading approach, meaning that uh, the, the program or the method used is not based on reading materials or not based on liter liter literary text. It's o it only used uh, uh, experiences of the child. They learn from their experiences, from their uh, personal experience. So another uh, strength of spontaneous reading approach is emphasis, emphasize language base. When we say emphasize language base, these are not log log logically arranged. Uh, because if we are going to compare a uh, spontaneous reading approach from a uh, sequential reading approach, uh, we can say that a uh, sequential Sequential reading approach are log logically arranged as we as the group one discussed. They, uh, uh, there are approaches or methods that uh, showed that uh, the teaching of uh, reading to a child have different levels of development. But under spontaneous reading approach, uh, these are it doesn't have uh, logical logically arranged or organized. So. Uh, we have tackled the strengths, we go to the weaknesses. When uh, we say weaknesses of spontaneous reading approach, the first one that we are going to consider is, it is too time-consuming. Yes, spontaneous reading approach is time-consuming because uh, we don't have the prepared materials, so we are going to base with our experience. So the, the learning of a child it is not a uh, ladderized or spiral progression. There's no spiral progression. We're going to uh, base on their experiences. So it will take uh, more time for the uh, children to learn how to read. So uh, as I well said a while ago that uh, this is personalized. So uh, the second weakness of a spontaneous reading approach is it lacks of manufactured materials. Experience approach. The language experience program to attempt to integrate listening, speaking, reading, and writing skills. Development, develop with accepting language of the child. Unlike the basal reading uh, approach, LAA does not require to the teachers to define a textbook or rather commercially prepared materials. Rather, the pupils' oral language back, back, background their knowledge Knowledge or experience are used to develop reading skills. When we say the language experience approach is a whole language approach that promotes reading and writing. Through the use of professional experience and oral language, it can be used in tutorial or class classroom settings. With homogeneous or heterogeneous groups of learners beginning literacy learnings, relate their experience to the to a teacher's or guide who trans transcribes them. These transcriptions are then used as a basis for another reading and writing activities. For instance, after a trip to the zoo with skillful questioning or providing, the pupils tell a story about their they and what they saw. The teacher write, writes down on the blackboard the words and sentences given by her pupils. These become the reading materials or springboard for their lesson in class. LAA first developing for Maori speaking, Aston Warner, 1963, and Native English. Speaking children has also been used successfully with learners. All age adult learners and entering ESL program may or may not have previous educational or literacy experience. So, one topic of four I am characteristics of language experience and approach. The language experience approach is a whole language approach that promotes reading, promotes reading and writing through use of personal experience and oral language. 
It can be used in in tutorial or classroom classroom settings. In homo hoto settings with homogeneous or heterogeneous groups of learners. Beginning literacy learners relate their experience to a, to a teachers to a teacher or aid who transcribes them. Who transcribes them? This transcript. These transcriptions are then used as the basis of other reading and writing activities. <clears throat> These are the features of the language. Features of the language experience approach. The L. The LEA is a diverse in the practice as its practitioner, practitioners. Nonetheless, some characteristics remain consistent. Materials are learned generated. Learn generate. All communication skills, reading, writing, listening, and speaking are, integri uh, are integrated are integrated. Difficu difficulty of vocabulary and grammar are determined by the learner's, learner's own language used learning and teaching are per personalized communicate communicative creative. Christian and Terrell on 1983 recommended to criteria for determining whether reading materials are appropriate for ESL learners. The learner, the reading must be a comprehensible level of co complexity and interesting to the readers. Reading text originating from learning, learner's experience Meet these two criteria because the degree of degree of complexity is determined by the learning learner's own language and the text related to the learner's personal interacts interest personal interest. Both material are particular important importance. In adult beginning, ESL classes were positive of learning of reading materials can be problematic. There are two variations two variation of LEA. The first one is the personal experience, the most basic and in fact the original form of the LEA is the simple trans transcription of an individual learner's personal experience. The teachers, the teacher or aide, or in a mixed ability class, are more proficient learner sits with the learner so so that, that the learner can see what is being written. Written. The, se the session begin with a conversation. With a conversation. Which might be prompted by a picture, a topic. The learner is interested as a reading text or event. The learner has participated in one topic involved. The learner gives an oral account of a personal experience related to the topic. The second one, the group experience. Group may also develop language experience, stories together, stories together. An experience can be set up and carried carried out by the group our stories can grow out of experience and stimulate f f 
from any part of the learner's personal, work, or classroom li lives. The following steps are involved. Number one, choosing the experience or its stimulus. A co in collaboration with the learners, choose a prompted, a prompt or activity that can be discussed and written up in, a, in some form. Number two, organizing the activity. Develop a plan of an action with the class. With the class, this might include what will you do, and when, and what will need. This plan, these plans can be written on board to provide the first link, bet link between the activity itself and the written word. Number three. Conducting the experience. Number four. Discussing the experience. Including all learners in the classmate. In the classmate. For an example, reconstruct the, sequ the sequence of events that took place. Number five. Developing a writing account. A written account developing a written account the class work together to develop a, write, a written account of what was done or discussed before actually writing writing a, a text the class must do might the class might do some planning activities like brainstorming, webbing, or mapping, List listing or sequenced ideas. Number six, reading the account. Once it read, once the written account Once the written text is complete, the teachers or the learner can read it loud to the class, focusing on the keywords and phrases. Number 7. Extending the experience. Many language activity beyond rereading can be based on the written text. In conclusion, although the LEA was developed primarily primarily as a tool for reading development listening 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 speaking and writing as well this integrated this integrated approach is an individual or shared experience as a basis for discussion writing and financial as a basis for discussion, writing, and finally, reading. So, good afternoon, ma'am. I am Jester F. Giochino, the one who will discuss about the topic, individualized reading. Now, what is individualized reading? Individualized reading is a way to organize reading instruction according to certain major tenets. Actually, it is not a system of instruction in which each student works independently at his own level without the help of a teacher or without the teacher instruction. In this period, the teacher must still actively participate by, in, by conferring with individual students to monitor and support their reading comprehension. Wilson and James enumerate this some major tenets. And here they are. The first tenet is children are encouraged to select reading materials that interest them. By showing your students books is a good way to build their interest level. A child who finds new books on their own can benefit from an increased sense of independence. 
That's why give students a choice in what they want to read. The second tenet is they read at their own pace. This tenet is actually the same in learning at their own pace, wherein it focuses more on areas that interest them the most or that which they understand better. Reading at their own pace helps reduce feelings of frustration, anxiety, or boredom that students may struggle with within a classroom setting. The third tenet is there is no set amount of reading required. Children determine how much reading to do. However, the fourth tenet is grouping is not static, rather, it is fluid, meaning or to say, it is the use of flexible grouping. Flexible grouping is a data-driven practice in which teachers are able to target specific needs for students by creating a variety of fluid groups in which students are provided specific instructional needs. The keywords in that definition are flexible and fluid, meaning or to say, these groups are not static or set in stone. Flexible grouping is something that highly effective teachers do very well. Flexible grouping is simply grouping students in the most advantageous way for delivering instruction. It can mean using whole group, small group, or partners. The bottom line here is that the teachers use flexible grouping to provide the right instruction to the right students at the right time in the right way. So, your groups will not look the same throughout the school year semester, or maybe in even the week. Flexible groups can and will most likely change from day to day. Now, let's move on to the fifth tenet, which is evaluation of reading ability is through prepared tests and through individual or group sessions using materials chosen by the pupils. The sixth tenet is the teacher and the pupils share responsibility for record keeping. Teacher uses these records in planning specific instructions and activities. The seventh tenet is skills are taught as needed. The eighth tenet is oral reading is used to diagnose reading difficulties. This kind of training helps the students achieve the goal of fluent, automatic readers with full comprehension. In addition to these benefits of oral reading are it sharpened focus, improve vocabulary, increase comprehension, strengthened listening skills, and interviewed young minds. And the last tenet is teachers are encouraged to draw on commercially prepared materials and aids for use in the total reading program. And these are some tenets about individual reading. language this is a term which is used to refer to reading and writing instruction which utilize complete text in communicative situation as contrasted with the focus skills practice which use phonics or isolated language drill i can say the whole language it refers to the understanding of what language is and how it can be learned. It teaches children to read by using strategies that show how language is a system of parts that work together to create meaning. 
the whole language acknowledge acknowledge that the reading outcomes of learners are created by how learners are taught to read it can be employed in class through dialogue journal writing conference among students and engaging student to have student meet books another explanation of whole language ito ay isang pamamaraan ng pagtuturo ng pagbabasa at pagsusulat na binibigyang diin ang pag-aaral ng buong salita para mas maintindihan ito at para mas malinaw at parirala sa pamamagitan ng pagtagpo sa mga ito at sa makahulugang konteksto sa pamamagitan ng pagsasanay na palabigkasan. Good afternoon, ma'am. This is Kenneth Pujayo and this is my topic. Um, manage reading system. This system capitalizes on the strengths of both the sequential and spontaneous reading approaches. Or sometimes it's called skills management system, objectives based system, or diagnostic prescription program. It is designed to provide individualized, carefully monitored skill specific approach to reading instruction. So, what is skills management system? So, it is web-based and dynamic system to identify, maintain, and utilize the knowledge of children's skills. So, they manage reading program usually includes the following components by Equal and Shankir 1991. So, first is a list of behaviorally stated objectives that range from pre-reading to upper grade skills. So, the next, a set of criterion reference tests that determines if pupils have mastered specific objectives. So next is record keeping devices such as pupil profile cards. Then guides for matching various instructional and practice materials with the specific objectives. So reading management programs. It is designed to improve, promote, and provide accountability in regard to independent reading for students of all ages. So it is primarily target specific reading skills such as comprehension and vocabulary development.